filming a podcast, editing a podcast, then making clips out of that podcast is a time consuming process. I've been doing that for the Cinepax podcast and actually I have been using AI tools to help speed up that workflow. And today I'm gonna to walk you through some of the AI tools that I use and whether or not they're worth it. So right behind me is actually where we filmed the Cinefax podcast. I was so busy today. Andy was out sick, so it was just me on the podcast, but we filmed in front of the LED wall. We have all this lighting set up. And honestly, this isn't even the most amount of work. There's a lot of work that goes into a podcast. I'm here at Cinepax Studio in North Hollywood, California. I've never filmed a YouTube video like this at my studio, so I thought it'd be fun. But the first tool that we have been using on the Cinepax podcast is Autopod. And you may have heard of this. It has some really nice features, but I actually have not used this. I have an editor for my podcast. So I actually interviewed him. You know, Autopod's been really cool because um, it's like the borderline between, I would say, like actual AI versus like just kind of like programming. I think it kind of leaves a lot of room for the creative aspect. It's one of those tools where kind of like does the switching for you so then I can focus on when are we inserting b-roll when are we you know maybe gonna make a short but from what I've gathered is it's not really gonna cut for story it's really just identifying which speaker is talking and it will cut to that camera angle for you so this is really nice I still think you do have to watch the entire podcast episode you're not just gonna be able to throw it in autopod and upload it I feel like you should definitely still watch through your podcast. I have links to all these AI tools down below, but the second tool that I use is ChatGPT, and we've all used this one. This is one of the ones that, you know, everyone's teacher hates on uh, for using for homework assignments, but I have found some really nice use cases for podcasts, so let's get into those. So one of the ways I have been using ChatGPT is actually I will export out a transcript. Um, then I'll feed that transcript into ChatGPT. So there's a handful of ways how you can get the transcript. Uh, one way is I have the audio file here. Audio, video, doesn't matter. That's the full podcast. Uh, this one's with Mario uh, Visions. And then you're gonna wanna come up to captions and graphics. On captions and graphics, then we're just gonna hit transcribe. This is gonna take a little bit uh, depending on the length of your podcast. My podcast, at, my podcast is about an hour and it should only take about, I don't know, like two minutes or so. Reminder, you wanna do this at the very end because if you change anything or if you change the length, it's, uh, gonna, make the, it's gonna make the chapter markers off. And my favorite feature is creating these really nice chapter markers that have a useful description. Okay, so here is the transcript. You can see it goes all the way through the podcast and we're gonna click these three dots right here. We're gonna go to export and typically I just do a text file. Uh, why is it being weird? There we go. I made my own GPT and you guys can actually use it. I'm gonna link it down below. This is a tool that I made that is called the Cinepax Podcast Assistant and it basically just helps uh, you create a bunch of content. Uh, it's still helpful to give it some prompts and like guide it a little bit, but this is just a good place to start. You can feed this your transcript with the name of the guest and then it will generate you a bunch of stuff. So starting out here, I'm gonna write my guest name is Mario Visions, comma. I'm gonna make a new line and then and I'm gonna say here is the transcript. I do pay for ChatGPT. I think I pay about $20 a month, but I have really been enjoying it. Okay, so here is the transcript just like this, and you probably could attach it, but I just like to copy it, and then I just paste it right here, and I hit in enter, and then let ChatGPT do its thing. So we can just press this arrow right here, jump to the bottom, and as you can see, we get a podcast title, Building the Creative Empires Inside the World of a Studio Owner, Mario Visions. I'd maybe tweak that one a little bit. And this is my favorite right here though. So you can see we have these chapter markers, introduction. So you can see right here, we have YouTube tags. Uh, we could just copy and paste these. Description as well, which is super useful. Um, and then here's some Instagram reels. Um, sometimes if I make a short, I'll do the same thing. I'll hop into Premiere. I'll drag my short into Premiere, like my Instagram reel. I'll transcribe that and then I'll throw that in here and then I'll use that for my Instagram reels because it'll base it more off of what that short is specifically about. Um, but that's pretty much it. You can really like modify this. You could say like, hey, uh, like let's say I don't like that title. Let me say, 
give me 15 podcast title recommendations. And just like that, I got 15 different title recommendations. So that's really helpful. And I feel like um, you don't want to just go with the first option it gives you. So you can really talk to this like a person. If you haven't used AI, definitely watch some videos on how to really utilize chat GPT. And obviously I wouldn't copy and paste this. I'm still editing this. I'm still adding my own twist. It's never perfect, but this is definitely a time saver. And I definitely recommend trying this out at least once. So the next AI tool that I use, this one's probably my favorite. Um, and it's a little bit controversial maybe. I've been using Opus Clip and what the software is, is it's basically an AI clipper. And it's basically going to take your long form piece of content, whether that's streaming, gaming, podcast, the list goes on. It's going to take that and it's going to spit out like a hundred clips for you. And this is really a game changer. It's been insane. It's crazy to see what it can actually spit out. Um, but I don't think Disclaimer, I don't think this replaces the editor, but it is a very powerful tool and I have been using it quite a bit. I've been using it so much, I wanted to see if you guys can tell the difference between these two clips. One was made with Opus Clip and the other was edited by my editor, Jesse, who picked out the story and edited the entire thing. One of these clips as well accumulated over 2 million views, so guess which one got 2 million and guess which one's AI. I'm gonna play a snippet from each clip. Here's the first clip. Like, I, I, me and Cole been talking over the internet for literally like eight years. He used to hit me up like, man, I, I look up to you. Like, when I had posted it, he literally reposted it. It was like, without no Zay, it would be no me. Like, and here's the second clip. When were you just like, oh, let's hang this mic and like shoot this? Um, I was on. literally bored. And then I think me and my wife, we just be driving and thinking of ideas. And I was just like, I'm gonna hang a mic in the hood. <laughs> and then she was like, all right, you have your answers? Okay, the first clip is actually AI. It was made with Opus. I did add the B-roll, I added the film burns, but it found that story and I really didn't change anything else. I just added B-roll and music. The second clip Jesse edited, and you may have guessed it, the second clip is the one that got 2 million views. Uh, it just blew up on the YouTube channel, actually gained us 6,000 subscribers, which is just insane. So I'm not sure if this really makes the case for Opus, but I'm gonna show you how to use Opus. I think Opus still does have viral potential. So let's go check it out. Okay, so here's Opus. Uh, they do have a free trial. I have a link down below if you guys do wanna check this out. Um, so what you can actually do is you can paste uh, any video in here, like any link, YouTube. That's all the links that you can use. There's a ton on here. When you post your video in here, it gives you a bunch of options on how you want to customize it. So um, right now they actually have like, uh, you could use their clip anything model for free. Uh, I'll just go clip basic. Uh, you can select you can select what genre and you can also put the clip length. I like zero to three minutes, but if you want longer clips, that's totally fine. Uh, you can trim your episode here and you can also filter by keywords. So like, Let's say you only wanted to clip sections about like if a person's talking about like a new camera that just came out or uh, I typically don't do that, but I might try that feature out in the future. Uh, and then I have some custom presets that I made, but you can also make your own presets or you can use some of their presets based on some of these examples. So you can see they have like the Mr. Beast font and all that and like the, the color highlighting. I made my own font that I, I made. I used my custom font and I used my custom color for this because I wanted it to match with our branding. And then you can see up here, this is how many credits you have. I have like 53 hours left. Uh, so that's still a good amount, but I've done a good amount of podcasts. So when you do a new podcast, I'll show you what it looks like. So I click into my episode here and then I have all, it, give, it made me all these clips out of that one. So it made me 37 clips. Are all of them good? Probably not, but that's still pretty sick, right? So it typically ranks them on virality. And the funny thing is, is it's quite often that it will literally clip the exact same thing that Jesse does because Jesse is, you know, he's editing for story. He's looking for the best clip and Opus is somewhat doing the same thing. So let's go ahead and play some of these. Cause to me, it's just like a bunch of crying babies. And it's just like, <laughs> Yeah, just like, like used like, to it at the house. Yeah, but so. just think about what we're doing. Like, you know, this is people's dream jobs. You yeah. know, like what we do is beautiful. Like, I know we're behind schedule. I know that 
it's not ideal. I know that, you know, lunch is late. I know meal penalty is a thing. But, but just... So I actually really like that clip. I think it could be a little bit snappier. Um, I feel like we could get to the point a little bit quicker. And I think it needs a couple things. It needs music and it needs B-roll. Um, so one cool thing that you can do is you can actually click edit clip right here. And then we can actually go in and this is where you can change the, um, you can add emojis, change emojis. Uh, I typically don't do those too often. You can, this is where you can play with all the captions. Um, but they also have this, you can click uh, remove pauses, which is pretty nice. And you can add B-roll here. I typically don't. I just wanted to show you guys a screen options you can do here but let's go back this is what i really like to do i like to hit export as xml so what that's going to do is that it's basically going to give me an xml file i can import into adobe premiere and i can edit this clip myself so it, I, I really can't extend anything but i can trim a good amount so let me show you what that looks like so it puts everything in a folder for you and then i'm just going to drag in results right here and go ahead and let that do its thing. And then it's gonna make you a sequence. So if I open up this sequence, boom, let me go back to editing. And here we are. So if I play this, it's just like a bunch of, you have all the captions on the top row. And let's say you wanna move them around. Like let's say you don't like where they were. You can move these anywhere, which they're on their own layer. But this really allows you to, so I can move these up. And then I don't have any B-roll, but let's just say I put uh, footage of me. I can put B-roll on here. I can edit a clip. I can add film burns. I could add sound effects in Adobe Premiere, which I'm used to. It also works for DaVinci Resolve, but I think this is a game changer because I can throw this in after my editor, he makes his clips. I could just throw this in and I can get a bunch of bonus clips. They're not going to be as high quality as Jesse's clips, but I think they still might get the job done and they might find some stories that Jesse may have missed. Even with Jesse's clips, we still use auto, we still use Opus for the captions just because we love the way those captions look. Last AI tool I probably use one more time is ChatGPT or Midjourney, and I may just make a image to put in my podcast clip. For example, like let's say a director is talking about, oh, I was really stressed out on set and all these people were barking down my neck and I was on a really big film set and I don't have a B-roll clip for that, right? But I wanna represent that feeling. I would go to Mid Journey or ChatGPT and I would say, create a vertical, and it's all about prompts, almost like a robot. Like you wanna just like get to every little detail. The more detail, the better when it comes to creating these images. Let me know in the comments if you've played around with any of these AI tools. Uh, I may use those as like B-roll clips sometimes, but that's pretty much it. Those are the three things I've used. I don't think this is replacing editors at all. We are still doing a ton of work with the editing. I'm spending hours just uploading and um, editing these Opus clips. My editor, Jesse, is putting in work. Shout out to leave some comments down below for Jesse. And lastly, make sure to check out the Cinepax podcast if you're a filmmaker. We've been investing a lot into it, a lot of time, a lot of money, and it's been really cool. I've been happy to have a lot of guests on i think i'm going to start knocking out some more remote episodes ai is helpful don't be afraid there are some scary things about ai but yeah i'm actually filming this on the gh7 as well comment down below if you want to see a video on the gh7 i'm tyler casey with cinepax that's my rant on podcasts and ai i'll catch you guys next time thanks for watching peace